Good morning, Miss Sami Sarantal. Welcome to another episode of GYVB's Accomplishment Report dated January 24 to 28 of this year. Throughout the week, PIO's reporters continued their thorough documentation of all the official happenings and functions of the provincial government of Miss Sami Sarantal, all of which encompasses Gov Bambi Manus programs. To review Monday's past events, Mayor Jane Salimbao is on standpoint. Danny Bshama Jr. will give the outline for Tuesday. Wednesday's activities will be sorted out by Jesse Andaliasa. Geneva Bandong will report Thursday. Friday's detailed events shall be conveyed by Regina Mormaigai and Raymark Simania will present the consolidated report. The successful fruit tuition of Miss Sami Serental's tourism sect manifested in the splendid celebration of the 9th Kuyamis Festival, wherein the hailed top three performing LGUs finally received their grand prize tourism vehicles. Unfolding this story is Mary Jane Salimbao. Yes, Jing! A delightful Monday started a week as the provincial government rewarded the winners for the recently concluded successful Kuyamis Festival of this year. On Monday, January 24, 2022, the provincial government of Pisamis Oriental, through Governor Bambi Imano, formally turned over the winning prize for the top performing LGUs of the province, namely the municipalities of Initao, Naawan, and Ishaan, held at the provincial capital grounds along with the flag racing ceremony. As the overall champion, the municipality of Inita received one unit of tourism bus, while two units of tourism vans for Naawan and Asan as the overall first and second runner-up, respectively. The mentioned vehicle serves as prizes from the recently concluded 9th Kuyamis Festival of the province, which will be of great help as they will be used for important events in their municipalities. The mentioned vehicles serve as prizes from the recently concluded 9th Kuyamis Festival of the province, which will be of great help as this will be used for important events in their municipalities. Present during the turnover were Governor Bambi Imano himself, Board Member Sairimi Imano, Miss Kuyamis 2022 Miss Annabel May McDonnell, Initao Municipal Mayor Nerito Akain V, Nawan Municipal Mayor Dennis Rowa, Hasaan Mayor Redentor Hardin, together with their respective LGU and ATOM officials, the Modha, among others. So by promoting Kuyamis, by joining all the activities of Kuyamis sa festival, nagpasabot ka na nga naghiusa ang katawahan sa Misamis Oriental alang sa kalampusan sa Kuyamis Festival. Of course, uh, pasalamat po ko kang Governor Bambi sa pagmugna ni aning uh, programa, pag-sustainer o sa paggahin siya ni aning uh, premyo nga makatabang kayo sa, sa lokal nga pangagamahan ng anak madaubo. Governor Bambi and your uh, entire uh, staff no ang uh, tibo probinsya sa inyong tanan uh, this is uh, mayor red hardin from the LGU of Hasaan. thank you very much for this uh, wonderful uh, prize that uh, we won uh, with the, this uh, time of the year is just starting so a very very wonderful gift uh, uh, from the province and of course from the one above nakang salamat og uh, happy happy successful celebrations at uh, Kuyamis Festival uh, 2022. As the host for the 93rd virtual flag racing ceremony, the Provincial Veterinary Office headed by Dr. Benjamin Resma reported the fruitful accomplishments for the periodic year 2014 until 2021 along with the African Swine Fever Weekly status update in which he announced that no new recorded active cases for the last 42 days and hoping that it will continue to start with the depopulation and sentineling processes. Alongside, Provincial Interagency Task Force Chief Dr. Jerry Kalingasan announced on Monday the gradual increase of COVID-19 cases starting last January 19 to 23 with a total number of 844 cases for the whole province of Misamis Oriental. He then encouraged the masses for continued adherence to minimum health protocols to contain the spread of the virus in the province. Furthermore, Ms. Annabel May McDonnell had a courtesy call to Governor Bambi Imano. One of the main topics of their conversation was her preparation for Miss Universe Philippines 2022. The good governor also conveyed for his full support for her dream especially in joining Miss Universe Philippines. Additionally, the Provincial Veterinary Office held another rabies IEC for a brief discussion regarding the LGU implementation of Republic Act 948, also known as Anti-Rabies Act of 2007 at Barangay Ula, Municipality of Hitagum. A total of 80 participants attended the event, which consists of Barangay Ulab officials and staff, as well as the farmers and pet owners. This is done to intensify the efforts in compliance with the Anti-Rabies Act 
and responsible pet ownership. Jane Salimbao, PIO. Governor Bambi Emanuel is very particular with the essence of preparation that elevated Ms. Sami Serental in responding to circumstances promptly and keenly. Under his administration, calamities and social threats affecting the people are never a dodge but a clear responsibility. For the roundabout update, here's Danny Ibshama Jr. Yes, Jing. Due to the bad weather that occurred, Governor Bambi Emanuel was swift in reminding PDRRMO and PSWDO to be prepared in any eventualities that may happen. On Tuesday, January 25, 2022, after experiencing rain in some parts of Misamis Oriental, the Misamis Oriental Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office continues to monitor the course of the weather, especially since the province is affected by the low pressure area. With the latest weather forecast of Pagasa at 11 a.m. on that day, the LPA was already in Prosperidad Agusan del Sur with little chance of becoming a tropical depression within 24 to 48 hours. With such, Governor Bambi Mano mandated PDRRMO to remain alert of any inevitable weather condition while all its personnel was prepared for any possible landslide and flooding and it may occur in the province. Also, Governor Bambi Manu informed the people to remain vigilant to avoid possible damage brought about by the rainy season. He also assured the people that PDRRMO is always ready to respond to them when needed, while PSWTO is on standby to assess those affected by the calamity of the provision of necessary assistance. Danny Vertedazo Obshama Jr. PIO PGEO has never been reluctant in taking good care of all Taguluanuns, exemplifying what kind of leadership Governor Bambi Manu has made through the years in service. With the multiple beneficiaries each day, stories are built up inspiring municipalities around the province. Here's Jesse and Deliasa for the complete details. Wednesday is not just an ordinary day for the province, Jing, but rather another day for the provincial government of Isamis Oriental to continue giving quality services to every Misa Miss Nuns. Last Wednesday, January 26, 2022, the provincial government of Misa Miss Oriental, through their provincial governor's extension office, under the leadership of attorney Nadia Emano, distributed culverts and other construction materials to residents of Kibudla Zone 14, Barangay Poblacion, in the municipality of Tagoluan. These said materials will be used to help solve problems on stagnant water and to renovate the communal deep well in the area. Present during the turnover were Poblacion Barangay Captain Honorable Prince Omar Imano and Barangay Kagawad Arnold Toitoy Abejo Ronda. Also, Sangguni Ang Bayan Member Honorable Hani Imano Donya, Miss Chick Chick Cousin Ko, and Mr. Kim Agustero enjoined the event. Indeed, PGMO through PGEO is always ready to answer and provide quality basic services to all its constituents all over Misamis Oriental. Jesse Andaliasa, PIO. PSWDO led the way in fulfilling PGMO's significant move to enrich the former rebels' way of living through the diligent provision of overflowing grace. Remarkably, Thursday's highlights the more than 2 million worth of financial assistance being turned over to them in collaboration with DILG Miss Orr. To this amazement, Geneva Bandong will tell us more. Yes, Jing. Undeniably, Misamis Oriental is a province where the poor, vulnerable, disadvantaged individuals, families, and communities are empowered for an improved quality of life. On Thursday, January 27, 2022, the provincial government of Misamis Oriental, through the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office, did not hesitate to help rebel returnees the way of giving them financial assistance under the ECLIP program in strong collaboration of DILG Misamis Oriental. This cause is meant to provide social protection and promote the rights and welfare of the poor, vulnerable, and disadvantaged individuals, families, and communities contributing to poverty alleviation and empowerment through social welfare and development policies, programs, projects, and services. In the municipality of Cavaria, 15 former rebels received financial assistance amounting to 2465000 in an awarding ceremony held at the 58th Infantry Battalion Headquarters located in Barangay Nipadlay in Cavaria. Handing over the said assistance by DILG Provincial Director Engineer Marisha C. Naibe, Board Member and Committee Chairman and Lisa Order Dexter Yasai, as Representative of Governor Gandhi Imano, 
Navarria Municipal Mayor Honorable Maria Luna Abugar, together with the Commanding Officer of 58 Infantry Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Ricky Pinapo. Ah, dahang kayo salamat. Hindi na kang bambi imano. So, dahang kayo salamat niya. Ah, sa pagtabang ni Mukha Namo, na wala gay walay hunong na pagtabang ka namang kami mga former rebels na po kayo namang pasalamat tungod kay amo nang magamit alang sa amo pagmaon at alang po sa amo mga pamilya Enhanced Comprehensive and Local Integration Program ITLIG is a flagship program of President Rodrigo Lodeta's administration that seeks to effect social healing and national unity through a whole of nation approach towards the higher objective of having just and lasting peace the mentioned benefits do not serve as an end, but rather a means to aid the formal rebels in securing a foothold in restarting their lives. On the same day, PSWDO distributed food packs and sacks of rice to 25 families living in the municipality of Caveria whose members were lost due to the vehicular that happened in the municipality of Balinasag last January 12 of this year. This act of sympathy showed Governor Bangui Mano sincere support and to the media, especially to the affected victims from the said incident. Mostly village workers with children who were supposed to join a post Christmas party of the Barangay Beach Resort in the municipality of Lagong Law. <laughs> Governor Bambi Imano took care also of the hospitalization of those injured and gave aid to the families who lost their loved ones in the accident. And Governor Bambi appealed for blood donations for some of the victims as well. And on behalf of Governor Bambi Imano, board member Dexter Yasai inspired the beneficiaries to just keep moving on the spine of challenges in life. PSWDO personnel also conducted an intake interview for financial assistance that soon will be given to them. PSWDO aims to provide social protection of the poor, vulnerable and disadvantaged sector and gave augmentation funds to local government units so this could deliver social welfare and development as WD services to the threats municipalities and barangays. Additionally, Thursday has been filled with merriment as the turnover of senior citizens' assistance happened successfully. This is to provide appropriate, accessible, and immediate social welfare services to all who are in dire need of assistance, especially to vulnerable sectors. The beneficiaries from the municipalities of Binoangan, Salai, Lagunglo, and Balinasag each received ample aid composing five sacks of rice, 40 boxes of adult milk, five boxes of alcohol, 50 boxes of face masks, and 10,000 financial assistance. While the awarding of role model Filipino family also happened with the giving of prizes to the winners. Winning families from each mentioned municipality received 8,000 peso cash prize and a plaque of recognition, while the consolation winners each got 3,000 peso, a grocery pack, and a certificate. For the awarding of role model Filipino family, for Binuangan, Greener, Nora, and Ms. Salito, the Indes family, Consolation, Ecolasa, and Basilio Salisa family, Salai, Greener, Suzette, and Rico Corpus family, Lagong Law, Greener, Eileen, and Jose Alok family, Consolation, Mylene, and Jimbo Rafal family, Balingasag, Greener, Ana Maria, and Roberto Bilangan family, Consolation, Susana, and Rodrigo Tagarda family. The dignitaries who are present were the Oscar and Moxka presidents from the said municipalities together with the respective MSWDOs. Moreover, the provincial ECCD office distributed 4,324 checklists for ECCD learners ages 0 to 4 years and 11 months old to the municipalities of Palisayan, Medina, Magdaytay, and Hingo OCD. Early Childhood Development ECCD emphasizes a holistic approach focusing on the child's physical, emotional, social, as well as cognitive development. The ECCD checklist is designed for service providers like rural health midwives, child development workers who can easily administer it after a brief training period. By using the checklist, they will be able to determine if a child is developing adequately or is at risk for developmental delays. Jimmy Balandong, PIO. 
Highlighting Friday is a bountiful harvest of the province in its agricultural endeavors through the existence of farmer's market that's long been feasted by all Misamisnans and people in nearby cities showering boundless blessings for local farmers. Reggie and Amor My Guy will deliver the detailed report. Jing, laudably, in awe of all Misa Misnans, Governor Bambi Imano remained true to his oath serving the province the best he could, which has always manifested through the rendered programs and services from time to time. On Friday, January 28, 2022, since the weekly farmer's market happening every Friday brought to existence again after being temporarily closed along with the threat of COVID-19 pandemic, this new year is truly a blast. With this, farmers can have displays on all their harvests and generate income that they could cherish to gain a better livelihood state throughout the current crisis. In effect, insurmountable thanks overflow among the local farmers who experienced the great care of Governor Bambi Imano through the years. Just last Friday, spearheaded by the Provincial Agriculture Office or PAGRO, total sales reached 55,951 pesos from the eight farmers on site. This is composed of their processed products with 17,065 pesos, rice with 32,345 pesos, and fruits and vegetables with 6,541 pesos. Minimum standard protocols to avoid the risks of getting affected with the COVID-19 virus are strongly implemented in the area. Still on Friday, Governor Bambi Imano's love to his constituents mirrored the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office's swift response on the flood victims due to the occurrence of LPA that happened earlier last week. The sad calamity greatly affected the municipalities of Talisayan and Medina. All the beneficiaries heartily thanked the provincial government after receiving several food packs which aid their immediate need for food sustenance. PSWDO took the initiative also in conducting an intake interview to assess the current situation of a total of 21 families being temporarily situated in evacuation centers, specifically at the covered court of Zone 4, Barangay South Poblacion in Medina, and at La Verdad Zone 3, Barangay Poblacion in Talisayan. Present along the event were Medina Municipal Administrator Ariel Anghai, MSWDO Medina Glory Lee Vosotros, and MSWDO Talisayan Spencer Rusal. Rajia Namoratanel, my guy, PIO. Merging one success after another, all offices and departments under Governor Bambi Imano's administration relentlessly go against the current of immense challenges making the week superbly productive. For the consolidated events, here's Raymark Semania. Yes, during the provincial government of Misamis Oriental under Governor Bambi Imano's leadership, doubles the effort in delivering the basic programs and services, all for the welfare of the people. Last week, the provincial governor's extension office in Tabulwan catered 414 clients availing free medical checkups and medicines in courtesy of Dr. Maria Bebina Cagarda Casino. Under Governor Bambi Imano's Servisyong Panglawas Program, the office conducted 12 free minor surgeries and 14 free circumcisions with the help of Tabulwan Sangguniang Bayan member and surgeon Dr. Ignacio Bobby Factoria II. Additionally, 98 clients were transported using the PGEO ambulance while the office catered 8 clients under its 3-in-1 services, providing free embalming, free coffin, and free transportation. Moreover, 93 clients were given financial assistance in support of their hospital and other medical bills. Salamat kayo, Governor Wambi o Atty. Nadia sa libreng atulis. In another story to evaluate, validate and inspect the quality and the structure of the projects for the safety and security of the people, the Office of the Barangay Infrastructure Project conducted a site inspection for the ongoing projects and final monitoring for the completed projects by contract under Governor Bambi Imano's Barangay Empowerment Program in 1st and 2nd Districts. In the 1st District, there are 5 infrastructure projects for a total cost of 23,666,679.13 pesos. While in the second district, there are six projects with a total cost of 30,888,632.4 pesos. Still for last week, the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office distributed assistance to families and individuals affected by the recent typhoon death. 177 food packs were given to families in Barangay Gracia Municipality of Tagulwan with board member Dexter Yasai. 
three sacks of rice were also given to the affected families in the municipality of Gitagum. 50 sacks of 5 kilos of rice donated by Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated were also given to families and individuals affected by the recent calamity in the municipality of Lagindingan in coordination with board member Nancy Madhos. While 10 food packs were given to individuals in Barangay Dayawan, Municipality of Villanueva, and 150 food packs were given to affected families in Barangay San Jose, Municipality of Talisayan, in coordination with board member Leonard Wynn Stanley. In another development, the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, together with the Department of Health, conducted a basic life support training for Inito MDRRM or Rescue Team. Basic life support is the primary medical aid provided to a person in an emergency medical situation. Believing that an adequate education in first aid and basic life support is essential to them as rescuers, they were given enough knowledge and skills in recognizing and handling emergencies which will improve their ability to manage medical emergencies through several medical procedures and techniques. Now for the Provincial Veterinary Office accomplishment, the office in coordination with Medina Municipal Agriculture Office conducted free spay and neuter services for cats and dogs in Barangay Kabog Municipality of Medina. 142 cats and dogs were given free operation. Aside from eradication of overpopulation, spaying and neutering also have a long-term effect on our pets and society's well-being. For the Provincial Health Office Accomplishment Report, under the expanded program on immunization, the office distributed 1,005 doses of Sinovac, 60 doses of Pfizer, and 610 doses of Moderna. Their COVID-19 surveillance team swabbed 66 individuals, while 112 underwent rapid antigen tests and 44 individuals were risk assessed. The PHO clinic attended to 53 patients. 26 of them experienced influenza-like illness, 9 requested medical clearance, and 3 cases for adverse effect following immunization, while 15 others sought for medical consult. 43 patients were served in their animal body treatment center, with 22 new cases. For their mental drug-induced psychosis program, 28 patients were served with 1 new case of mental health. Ray Martimania, PIO. Never before in the history of Misami Serental that our province has been as prosperous, as resilient, as equitable, or as strong as it is today. Never before has our future been brighter. And while we know that there will always be challenges, we also know that as long as we remain true to the ideals that brought us to this point, there will never be a problem we cannot overcome together. And our best days will always still be ahead. Jinkerosit PIO